let me get back to the question that I have missed okay, on transport aspect. Okay, I want all of you to focus on this discussion. This is a bit important one. Now, in transport answers, uh, inland water transport, dedicated freight corridor, Sagar Mala project, Bharat Mala project. We're talking about uh, diamond quadrilateral. Okay, we're talking about uh, western and the eastern expressways, border roads. Now, just as in agriculture, I've talked about the octagon. In transport, I want you to know these important things. For whatever discussions you have, you must know the facts. Facts as in from where to where, along the coast, along which cities are they connecting, what the purpose, know some facts. You must have some discussions related to what are the cost advantages. Cost advantages, remember you have the graph, okay? And the railways, the roadways, and the seaways. Discuss the cost aspects and also discuss the ecological importance. The next important point we can discuss is or factor or geographical factors which can be advantageous and which can be disadvantaged for a type of a transport. Like say terrain, if it's hilly, difficult to have railways. Flat plains are most suitable for roadways and railways. If the rivers have irregular thalway, waterfalls, bad for, okay, again, shipping, bad for, if the coastal regions have big deltas, ports are difficult. So what are the geographical factors related to advantage and disadvantage of any transport system? They relate this with regional development. Okay, every okay, uh, road transport is part of some regional development, part of regional integration. You have talked about okay, horizontal and space unity related to linking consumption centers with production centers, important as a part of market and labor integration. So regional development can include all of this. And the fifth important point is talk in context of any growth theory. I call this as transport pentagon. Five dimensions around which you can discuss significance and importance of transport. And these three things, talking about some growth theory, regional development and factors impacting, these three aspects are directly part of geography. Did you all get the idea? What are the components of the, uh, the Pentagon? For every transport, know the facts, please. Talk in relationship to the costs and ecological benefits. So there I'm talking about the graph. Uh, road transport, we have got railways, we have got waterways. Remember the concept of complementarity. There is a factor related to geographical factors in transport. Okay, Geographical factors related to terrain, geographical factors related to climate. Bring in the geographical factors, mountainous regions, flat plains, plateau regions, hard rocks, soft rocks, perennial rivers. Okay, You can talk about seasonality of rivers. You can link it to the continental shelf and deltaic depositions, the presence of natural ports, if any. The fourth aspect is relate it to regional development. And the fifth aspect is relate it to any of the growth theories. So this is like your mind map 
like your schema for discussing transport sector growth theories link it to growth poll concept now some discussions on growth theories there are three concepts you can directly use while justifying transport development one is talk about transport as developing trading hubs transport can develop break of bulk centers multi modal transit centers these can become growth poles and growth centers okay that's one transport hubs including remember we talked about dry ports inland container okay terminals they all are centers of growth they can become centers of manufacturing so link this with this theory second very important concept is that transport helps in spreading development on the lines of core periphery model given by friedman this is a geographical or this is a conceptual idea that any transport and development can help in spreading of development okay and here we'll use the concept of core periphery model according to friedman what friedman said was there are four stages in development not like rostov's model there is a pre industrial stage there is a transitional stage there is an industrial stage and there is a post industrial stage in the pre industrial stage there are many centers which are not connected each center is like an independent center okay there are many centers these are basically rural centers they are not connected in the transitional stage some centers become larger as they start attracting resources towards themselves from the smaller centers and this happens because of transport and economic relation first stage second stage in the second stage we are starting to have the development of growth centers these are the growth centers in the industrial stage development from this now starts to spread out starts to spread out spread out spread out and new centers these have become bigger and new centers have come up so in this there are new centers because of the spread effect so the third one and the spread effect is also because of transport linkages in the post industrial phase now we have development which has spread so starting from rural regions now the development has spread across and all of them have got linked like a typical modern conurbation type of development this again is typical of areas that have good transport so we have used a technical word core periphery model of friedman to explain how transportation can help develop industrial and post industrial economies in the post industrial the centers have grown across there is no there is no disparity now in the post industrial like all the centers are equally developed a kind of balanced development okay is kind of integration like typical like what we have in case of conurbations you can use this concept 
we're talking about the eastern and the western corridors from Mumbai to Delhi, from Ludhiana to Dankuni. We have the dedicated freight corridors and how this can result in development of centers along these. And this is one type of spread of development. So I said, there are three concepts linked to growth theories you can use. One is use the concept of growth poles and growth centers. Second, talk about core periphery model. So core periphery model of Friedman feed, says there are four stages in development. From starting from rural regions, isolated centers, the centers have now got integrated into a continuous development. Okay, so this type of development happens if there is transportation. And the third reference to a theory is diffusion of innovation. This concept for the first time was given by Evert Rogers. You also have the work of Haggard Strand. And what they said is development is a function of diffusion of innovation, which in turn depends on the type of innovation depends on social factors and depends on communica communication channels. This is the point. I have to bring transport into my discussion. Diffusion of innovation happens in the presence of communication channels. And these channels can be of different kinds. We can have digital channels, we can have informal channels, we can have cultural channels. You talk about transportation network. The better connectivity we have, and you can see this operating in case of rural urban connectivity. Okay, You can see this happening in the transformation of the rural urban fringe. Whether you talk about change in the occupation structure, change in the land use practices, the change in the entire economy, it all happens because of diffusion of innovation. So if you can use these three concepts, the answer becomes all the more better. This is something you can add. How do geographical factors impact the transportation? And talk about regional development and the growth theories. Growth can happen in two ways. Growth as a function of demand and supply, and this can be externally induced. This is called as exogenous growth models. Or growth can also be induced without the demand and supply. Inducement generally happens with education, but an important aspect is also investment in infrastructure. Okay, so if you are inducing the growth by developing infrastructure, like one center here, if you have because you have made a road, industries have come up here. Because you have set up an engineering college, maybe some people find employment here. Okay, so you are inducing the growth where the demand is not present on its own. When they induce the growth, we call this as endogenous. Transport development can be part of endogenous growth models. Okay. Our classical economics is more around exogenous. We have a lot of endogenous study by Kenneth Arrow. He also won a Nobel Prize for this. He talked about endogenous growth models. So in your answer, let this be a passing reference. That's all. That, endo, that transport sector is endogenous growth and uh, it can help in development of the region. So once you know this concept, now you can go back and apply this to your answers on inland. The other points are same. Inland transport, advantages, advantage of the dedicated freight corridors. Okay. But if you can use these two schemas, 
the four growth models and the pentagon your write up becomes a bit more technical in nature good night bye bye all of you take care